Welcome back. In this video session, what we're going to do is compare the three datums that are commonly used in Alaska. So WGS 84, which is what GPS is based on, the North American datum of 1983, and then in Alaska, USGS topo maps are based on the North American datum of 1927. So we've got this Excel spreadsheet and we've got the longitude and latitude of the location of the benchmark that's on top of the Reichert building. So in ArcMap, what we'll do is add to our data frame that first worksheet from the Excel spreadsheet. And then we can open it and look at it. So now we've got a column representing longitude and latitude. Okay, so we're going to use a tool called Make XY Event Layer. And that will allow us to make a point layer from our table. So basically, we've got our worksheet from our Excel. And then what field represents the X coordinate? So that will be the column called longitude. And what field represents the Y coordinate? So that will be the field called latitude. And then we'll call the GCS NAD 83. And then the spatial reference is what are the longitude and latitude in terms of what datum is that representing? So in this case, if we go to the folder geographic coordinates and then North America, we're going to say this is North American datum of 1983 and then just OK. And that will make a layer representing our point. So then OK. So here's our point layer, and there's the point, and it's right on top of the Reichert building, but it's located here in Alaska. So now what we'll do is we'll save that and make it a permanent GIS point theme. Okay, so we'll use this tool called Copy Features. So take our input point layer, and we're going to output it into this geodatabase that we downloaded, alaska.mdb, and I'll call it point geographic coordinates based on the North American datum of 1983, and then just save, so OK. OK, so we can repeat the process. This time we'll do it for the North American datum of 1927. So I can recall the tool using the results uh, window. And then this time, instead of being 83, we'll call it 27. And then the spatial reference will be North American datum of 1927. And then OK. And then we'll copy though that layer. So the layer is GCS NAD27. And we'll call that point GCS NAD27. And then OK. So that is a permanent point theme in our geodatabase. And then one more time, we'll do the same thing for GCS WGS84, which is what GPS is based on. And then the spatial reference. So now, since it's what GPS is based on, it's a worldwide system. So if we go to the world folder, there it is, WGS84. And then OK. And then results. So then we copy features. So it's our WGS84 layer. And we're going to copy it to point GCS WGS84. OK, so the reason why we're doing this is what's the difference between NAD83 and WGS84 if we have the exact same longitude and latitude? And what's the difference between those two and NAD27 given the exact same longitude and latitude? So make a new data frame. And then add to that data frame your point that is in NAD83. So 
So here we have our point, it's in NAD83. And then add to the data frame the point that is in WGS84. And then we get a warning, it says, okay, if you want to put it in the same coordinate system, NAD83, we need to execute a transformation. So the transformation to translate that points location to the same um, location in NAD83 datum is our first choice. So WGS84 to NAD83. And we'll make that some different symbol. I'll give it a triangle. And then zoom to layers. So I highlight both layers, holding the shift key down, and then right mouse click zoom to layers. So you can see that they are not in the same location. And then we'll do the same thing with our third point. So once again, there's an appropriate transformation to get a point that was originally assuming the globe has this shape into NAD83. And that is the choice that has Alaska in it. So it's NAD27 to NAD83 Alaska. And then close. And then we'll give that point some different symbol. I'll give it a square. And then to zoom to all three layers, we could hit the full extent. Okay, so the bottom line is there's a huge difference in the location of the same longitude and latitude if you're using the North American datum of 1927, which is relatively poor accuracy compared to the North American datum of 83, which is a much better accuracy. So what is that distance? So if we use the measure tool, we could go to our point that is NAD83 and then go to our point, which is NAD27. But first, we'll set our measurement distance to meters. So the distance is about 125 meters. So the same longitude and latitude in the North American datum of 1927 compared to the North American datum of 1983. So 125 meters is a huge distance. How about WGS84 compared to NAD83? So once again, if we hit the shift key, zoom to layers, that distance is gonna be much smaller because these are both fairly accurate datums. So, that distance is about 1.2 meters. So the bottom line is it's not a big deal if you make a mistake and say, oh, my longitude and latitude is WGS84 and it was really NAD83, or you say, oh, my longitude and latitude is NAD83 and it was really WGS84. No big deal, it's about 1.2 meters. But it's a huge deal if you mistake NAD27 from these two, WGS84 or NAD83. So for example, if you say, oh, here's my longitude and latitude, and it's in NAD83, but it was really from an old topo map, NAD27, that distance is huge. Um, so if we go zoom to layers, that distance is about 125 meters error. So that's the bottom line is you need to be careful when you specify longitude and latitude, what is the datum that it's based on? Is it based on NAD27, WGS84, or NAD83? Okay, so here's an example. We specify the longitude and latitude is NAD83. What's wrong with the following coordinate near Fairbanks, Alaska? Okay, so the first thing that's wrong in GIS, it's always X comma Y. So what we need to do is specify our X value first, and then comma our Y value. That's the first thing that was wrong. The second thing that was wrong is we're west of the prime meridian, so we need to express our X 
as a negative value, which indicates we're in the Western Hemisphere. So that longitude value must be a negative 147.75. Okay, so what's wrong with this um, location in longitude and latitude? So we specify the longitude and latitude and the datum that it's based on. So the longitude is negative 147, so it's in the Western Hemisphere, 0.75 degrees, and the latitude is 64.33 degrees. So what's wrong with that location? Okay, it turns out that if we say 0.33, the GIS is going to assume that means 0.33000. And we don't have enough precision in our latitude or longitude. We should have it to the fifth decimal place. So here's an example. Um, 64.33 would assume by the GIS that represents 64.33000. So that location, that location, the difference between 64.3333 and 64.33000 is about 0.2 minutes. And on a topo map, that would represent 370 meters on this particular topo map. So, for example, say you're fighting a fire and the fire is reported at this location, but because you were given the latitude as 64.33 in your GIS or GPS, you navigate to that location. So you're south of the river and the fire is really north of the river. So the fire is really 370 meters north of the reported location because we didn't report it with the correct precision of at least five decimal places to the right of the decimal. Okay, so that's enough about longitude and latitude. In the next video session, I'll teach you about the three most common coordinate systems used in GIS in Alaska.